What's up, everyone? How's it going? How's it going? Welcome to another episode of Bible Sessions. Give me a thumbs up if you hear that audio right now. <laughs> so um, today is the start of the Servanthood series that I prepared for, for the next few messages. And I just wanted to really dig deep into what servanthood is, all different aspects of it. I mean, a lot of people do different types of serving throughout the whole world, but I'm going to get down to what it says biblically and through life experiences. But first, I want to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the anointing of this message, God, yes, that you would fill us with that spirit, that spirit's able to teach these people, to reach the masses, God, to raise an awareness to what servanthood is through the Bible through your word, God. Yes, you just Lord. come down and you just give us these blessings, God, and put that true anointing on this message. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say amen. Amen. All right, everyone. I'm Jonathan James, and we're back with... Brother Jason. Brother Jason, man. You guys remember him from a few weeks back. We did his uh, his testimony on the podcast of uh, Let's Get Real. But tonight, we want to... You know, I thought... I mean, all through church today, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I want to do this message on servanthood. And uh, I've been spending a lot of time with Jason. We've been doing a lot of music and stuff and just talking, hanging out, eating, fellowshipping, doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, I said, why don't you get on the message with me tonight? So let's do this and we're going to get up on this. I want to get really into this here. Um, this whole series or this message tonight is going to be based out of uh, John. <laughs> John 13, 12 through 17. So we got John, I got that brought up right here. Um, John 13, 17. You guys, you don't have to necessarily go into that right now, but basically we need to have hearts ablaze that are to burn with the passion of serving God, honestly. That's what we need. Um, serving God and importantly, serving others. We must love other people and serve them with a kind and loving heart. Only then will we be able to make an, uh, a change for eternity or, and become uni unified in everything that we do. Amen? Amen? What does serving look like to you? Serving looks like to me because you got a good servant and you got a bad servant. You know, you got a servant that's going to wake up and know that he has to serve and is going to want to serve and is happy to serve. And then you're going to have the servant that loved serving for a little bit. And yeah. then he, all of a sudden he gets tired, like his heart's not in it no more. How do I know? Because that was me for a moment. Fizzled out. You know, I fizzled out. I was happy to serve. I was happy to be at church. I was happy to be serving the toilets, scrubbing the toilets. Wherever my church needed me, that's where I was. You know, I didn't always have my hand up wanting to put myself anywhere I was just laid back, and wherever they needed me, that's where I was at. I was on fire for a moment. I was on fire for a moment. Then the moment that, you know, I wasn't in my word, and I knew I had to go serve that day, I didn't feel like serving that day. There would be a grumble with it, like, oh, man, I don't want to do this, or why do I have to take out the trash, or why do I got to take the toilets? I don't want to scrub the toilets today. That's because my heart wasn't in it no more. It was in it at first, but the moment that... You know, you're not in your word and you're not pressing in and you're not teaching yourself the word of God and learning the word of God and how to be a better servant, then you're not going to want to be a faithful servant that we're called to be. And the opposite of what I was doing is then, you know, you find yourself, you find yourself, you let the Lord speak to you, you know, then you just want to serve. Amen. Your heart wants to go out and reach people. Your heart wants to be in it. It doesn't matter if you got to scrub the toilets. It don't matter if you got to take the trash out. Whatever they need you to be at in the house of God, you're going to do it with compassion. You're going to do it with love. You're going to do it with gratefulness and thankfulness. Amen. See, a lot of people look at serving in the church as a punishment and not a joy. Yeah. So when they, when they see it like that, you see, studies have proved over and over that those who serve are more content and happy in the things that they do. Amen. Whether in the church, you know, when you're more involved with people and you sit around and you talk with people, you fellowship, you find yourself more content and happy. And that's be over other people who choose not to. 
See, serving doesn't stop outside the church doors. I had to make this, I had to put this out there. Serving does not stop outside the church doors. We must take it into the schools, the workplace, and pretty much everywhere we go. Amen. Yeah, you know, it's crazy how we always feel that we have to keep everything inside the four walls of church. But it's crazy that we let it go to that extent. There's a book called The Pursuit of Happiness by uh, David Myers. In Myers' book, The Pursuit of Happiness, he addresses the truth about what genuinely brings happiness and contentment to people's lives. And I, remember I have some uh, things out of his book. In his epilogue, after going through many studies, he sums up his findings. I have them here. Few people are genuinely happy. These are mistaken ideas in the pursuit of happiness. Few people are genuinely happy that wealth buys well-being. If you can buy it, you'll be happy. Money buys happiness kind of thing. That tragedies such as disabling accidents and permanently... That, that tragedies such as disabling accidents permanently erode and get rid of happiness. Something bad happens. Uh, the, an accident where you're down or in a hospital. Something bad happens that makes makes you think that you cannot be happy anymore. Um, see, that another mistaken idea is that happiness springs from memories of intense. That teens and the elderly are the unhappiest people. Another mistaken idea, that trial marriages reduce, of, reduce the risk of later divorce. So doesn't it sound like common sense that it's a mistaken idea? That religious faith suppresses happiness. I believe religion might suppress some happiness, honestly, because absolutely, um, if you get stuck in religion, it could definitely suppress your happiness. You know, with my Christian walk, it's spiritual. It's a spirituality thing. Amen. And we don't stay religious with it. Amen. But, and also in this book, they ponder things that do enable happiness. Fit and healthy bodies. I know when I look good and I feel good and I... I feel like I got enough sleep and all kinds of things like that. I feel good. Amen. Realistic goals and expectations. Positive self-esteem. Yeah, that makes us feel good. That should make us feel good. Positive self-affirmations and the things that we do in our life. Supportive friendships that enable companionship and confiding. Those can help better our life. A socially intimate, sexually warm, equitable marriage. Equitable marriage. Uh, challenging work and active leisure, punctuated by adequate rest and retreat, a faith that entails coming, a communal support, purpose, acceptance, outward focus, and hope. Those are the things that we look for that give us that, what does it say? The happiness. There's ways that we have happiness, things that we do when we love others. Do we feel happy when you love people? Absolutely. We, and, and it even, feels good. And even when you don't have even when you don't want to serve, you know, because serving comes with that C word everyone hates or everyone's afraid of. That C word, you know what that C word is? Yeah. Commitment. And people go, oh, you want me to commit to this? Oh, you want me to do this? It's crazy. You know, I don't know any other way to put it, but That's when, you, when you commit to something, you're going to have to That's good. buckle it down and serve. That's good. Like, that kind of reminds me of myself, you know. Um, I was committed to serving. I was committed to doing a lot of things, whatever God wanted me to do, you know. I was there. Yeah. I was there, you know. And like I said, there was a few times where I had to check myself and ask myself, yeah, what type of servant am I? I haven't, you know, I was coming to, to realize I haven't been the best servant. I haven't been showing up. I haven't been there, you know. And it's not good to serve when you're gonna wake up and you feel like you're forced to go serve, yeah. then it's you might as well not go serve at all with that type of feeling, you know. I've been there. Uh, you know, and I was like, nah, but I do want to serve. The flesh don't want to serve. The right. flesh don't ever want to serve. The flesh wants to do the whole opposite of what you should be doing as a Christian and as a servant, you know. But I had to check myself and I had to be like, you know what? I haven't been the best servant. I want to be there. I want to serve where they need me at. If I can make it there, if I could be there. If, if it's God's will for me to be there, 
whatever it is that I'm going to make sure that I'm there serving because it's not about me no more. It's not about us no more. It's about what God needs us to do and what God wants us to do and it's to reach his people and to serve whether for, you know, we got to go do somebody's yard, if we got to go help out, take out somebody's trash, if they need help painting, whatever the case may be, yeah. as long as we're there as a servant. Amen. You see, in the right motivation for a Christian service is love. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Paul mentioned this earlier Woo! today. Come on. I mean, it's, it's, it's the service is love. Uh, when we discover God, that he loves us and the everlasting love that we might deeply just be with him. We want to serve when we know that we yes. are serving God. You know, we own a cleaning business. I, me and my wife, we own a cleaning business. And some people say, wow, you guys do a pretty good job. What makes you want to do a good job? You know, and I always think, you know, I'm just, I'm cleaning for God. I'm acting as if I'm cleaning for heaven. Uh, I'm, I'm cleaning the kingdom of God. And if you put that into perspective, like, what are you actually doing these things for? Why are you serving? You know, and that's like originally where in 2011, where Save to Serve came from, um, is the fact that I believe I've been saved by the grace of God to live in this life and to serve others. Praise the Lord. And in order to serve others, we have to love people, meet people where they are. Amen. Uh, be where they are. It doesn't matter what people are going through because there's people Absolutely. that go through so many things that aren't even talking about it. They're afraid to talk about it. They're not sure exactly how to even approach it. And... Like serving is not just in the church. I mentioned this earlier. It can be serving the homeless, there serving you your family, Come on. Come on. serving somebody at your your kid's school. Come on, somebody walking by your house, walking the dog. It does not matter. That person that you see with a cardboard sign begging for money, reach a need. Yeah, reach the need, reach man. Meet need. them where they reach are. You know, Amen. Pastor Bobby says consistency is key when Amen. we show people that we care and that we love and that we're there. And, and, and it's easy. It's awesome too because when you see somebody need, you, you know that that's in need of something, you know whether if it's even prayer, but even if it's just to reach out your hand and let them know that they're there if they need help, you know it could be anybody. It's it, it's awesome when you know it's intentional, like Pastor Bob says. You yeah. know it's always intentional. You know Amen, you could you could walk down the street, you know, and see somebody that needs help with their yard or something, and that was intentional through Jesus for you to be there and be like, hey, you know what? I have a Absolutely. couple guys here that could, you know, do the yard for you. You don't got to worry about it. Man, that's that's the best feeling ever is when we were just there right on time. You know, we, we just reached the need. We were there when we were needed to be there. It was intentional and we get it done. And people are susceptible to it. It's good. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, God has given us the salvation. It's, free, it's a free gift of salvation that he's given us. Amen. He's done for us what we could not do for ourselves. Absolutely. The, the debt was paid. He shed his blood of his most, most precious son um, for undeserving souls like us. He did it. When all that comes together and clicks, just think about it. It's unquenchable. It's a divine energy. It puts us and infuses us into the spirit of the believer. People who are afraid to believe in the the ones that are like non-believers, this is what fuels it. There's a desire to return to love to God. When we give back and we serve, we are giving that love back to God. Amen? Amen. See, that love returned to God through worship and service, worship music, worshiping God, letting him know that he is the most high, giving him for everything we have from off the top. It's amazing how we just grow like that. I have so many notes here, guys, but the Holy Spirit is taking over, and that is the plan. Praise the Lord. But uh, it's amazing. It's natural and nothing short of passionate when we give to God and we work for God and we love others and things just come out. Got something? Yeah. The other day I was reading um, the book of Matthew. I was just uh, going back through some things, you know, and... The Lord spoke to me, and like I was saying, you know, like I went from being a good servant for a little bit, then I grumbled about some things, you know. I was there was mumbles and complaints. Oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that, you know. So it made me like step aside, you know. And I, when I read Matthew, the book of Matthew, it was uh, chapter twenty-five, verse twenty-three, and I was like, man, it says, "His Lord said to him." Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful 
over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Mm -hmm. So imagine the day comes, you know, and we call, we come into judgment, and we come, you know, we come to Jesus, and we're he's sitting at the right hand of the throne, and we're on that judgment seat, and he's like, Jason, you were mumbling about doing this, you were mumbling about doing that, but that's where I don't I don't want to hear I don't want to hear what you know how bad I was doing. I I, I want to please God, you know. I don't want to be the one that was known to be a grumbler, yeah. mumbling when I had to serve or I just didn't go, you know. So and we've all done it. We've all been a part of it. Whatever spot I could make up, I rather <laughs> make up now. So when I come to God, you know, I don't I could hear the good and faithful servant. Well Amen. done. Amen. And uh, that brings us to the verse of this message I want to talk about. It's uh, John 13, 12 through 17. This, is, this gets real deep. Yeah. Verse 12, he says, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And Jesus says, Do you understand what I have done for you? Verse 13 says, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Verse 14, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash another's feet. The most high in the world of all mankind, Amen. Jesus washing my feet, your feet. And he's just saying, now that I've washed your feet, go and wash others' feet. And in the sense of not actually washing other people's feet, but we are to go and do for other people. Do great things and serve people. Give to them if they need it. You know, verse 15 says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Amen. Verse 16 says, I tell you the truth. This is why I love the word of God because it's truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Final verse here, 17 now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. He's telling us if we serve and love others, we will be blessed. And it's not, I don't like to do it because I think I'm going to get something. I like to do it. I like to see people smile, see people actually receive the things that they really want or need. Amen. The things that, I mean, it, it does feel good when you see people get what they want and need. And if some blessing comes to me from God, then so be it. I'm not here to stop any blessing that comes because they just keep coming. They've uh, poured on me so many times in my life. They continue to pour. And I believe that's because I have that servant's heart. Amen. It's put in that direction and it's put in position where I need to be. If I keep serving, I keep receiving. Yeah. But I, I serve because my heart's in control. Amen. And God controls my heart and my mind and my whole body. And with that being said, as I serve, I am giving everything I possibly can. And yes, it does get tiring, but at, at times you feel like you can't keep going on. But it only goes for a minute. Pray about it right there in that instance that God can take away that irritability that you are feeling because God is just, he's going to remove anything that you feel is hindering you. Amen. See, serving is to be an intricate part of being a Christian. It's a part of our faith. It's who we are. We are called to be servants of God and, and of one another. We are all instructed to minister and serve. Another reason why I wanted to be on, you on here because, you know, if I can get you on here doing messages like this, it's going to make you comfortable in doing it anywhere else you go. You know? Amen. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and I feel this is how another way I can serve people is to show them, hey, this is the word of God. This is everything that we're doing. This is how it can be a true intricate part of being a Christian. It's like I said, it's a part of our faith, but I want to be able to show others and give into others, so into other people as yourself Amen. and show you that with God, controlling your mind and your heart things are going to be great in your life it's it's amazing you know it's, it's it's crazy the choice to serve is rooted in a word that word we talked about earlier i may have jumped ahead on my notes but that commitment word two questions could be thrown out who do you serve and who are you committed to 
A lot of people have that direction. Who do you serve and who are you committed to? I'm committed to my family because the ministry and the servanthood starts in the home, I believe. What I do here, I bring outside the doors and bring into the church and bring outside the church, into neighborhoods, into other, ho other homes and stuff like that. You see? And I have a list of things here that uh, people today say they just do not commit to anything. I don't have time to commit to anything, but, you know, and honestly, they really do. You know, what do you see other people committing to do? I see people commit to playing sports. I see people commit to watching sports and supporting their favorite teams. Go 49ers? No. <laughs> Go 49ers. <laughs> no. It's things like this. Um, I got more. I see people, this is deadly, commit to their jobs. I see people commit to their cabins or their homes. I see people commit to the pursuit of money. I see people commit to watching their favorite TV show. I see people commit to themselves to live their life in their own way. You see this list? It can go on and on and people just... They think, oh, Christian, Bible, Jesus. Yeah, that's not for me. I got all this other stuff I'm, I'm committed to. I don't have time for that. But you don't understand if you commit to God and to Jesus and you inst instill that in your life, everything that you need will be added to you. Will be added to you. Amen. Amen. That's how it works. You see, people are committed to political parties. I mean, it's fun. I like to watch and, and see, oh, that person should be better than this person, and this is why, or this is, not, this is why not. There's all kinds of things that go on. Do you have any input on this? Something valuable that I've learned, too, is commitment is good, but I, like I said, I'm always going to use me for an example. I had to ask myself, but what am I committed to? Is it God? Is it because it should be God first? Yeah. Everything else should be put aside. You know, this this word, the word of God, the, the word of God is always going to be my commitment first. You know, and the best feeling about being a server, I feel like, is when you could be a blessing to others and not asking for anything back in return. Like, you know, I, there was a six months straight where I was going and cutting all the homeless people's hairs and they'll sit in my chair and... I'd be able to cut their hair and, you know, as I'm cutting their hair, I have my hand on their head and I'm cutting their hair, but I'm also praying for them. <laughs> I'm also praying for them, you know, and as soon as they're done, they're looking all fresh and sharp. They got a smile on their face and, and I tell them and I always make sure they know I'm like, so I, I don't charge, but I do ask if you let me pray for you. I was already praying for you, but now I want you to hear the yeah. prayer also, and I want to be able to pray with you. That's all I ask that you let me do. For me, that was serving. That that, that was being a blessing to Amen. somebody else, you know, without asking for anything back in return because God always takes care of that, you know. I, don't, I, I can't say that I need anything I, or I want for nothing, you know, because God always provides. God always provides. Even if it's my last crumb, I'll take my shirt off my back for you if I had to, you know, but just being able to sow into somebody's life and be a blessing and being able to serve is the best feeling ever. It's yeah. better than going up to somebody and being a part of where you're just not being a servant, but you're, you know, you're, you're, you're providing for something that, mm -hmm. you know, that they shouldn't have when you could be a blessing. Amen. I get that. That's real. See, this is the real topic that we're getting into this and we're showing or actually not showing, we're telling you, you know, real life stories, how things are really working in, you know, with my list, it goes on and on. All those things I mentioned, you know, people committing to education, political, political parties, the pursuit of pleasure, all those things. People commit to certain foods. People commit to going to the state fair every year. I'm going to go to the state fair. I'm going to go to the concert. I'm going to do this, 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 all these things they put in place in their life, but they have no room to serve another person. It's selfless when you start to serve other people. You see, all these commitments that I mentioned are temporary. They have no eternal value whatsoever. In other words, they won't last forever. 
But see, a hard thing is, I don't see people committing to eternal things. Not a lot of people. Things that matter to the Lord. And these are people that are non-believers, the ones that aren't walking in the Lord. And there's probably still some that are Christians, but they aren't walking it out. Amen? And it's crazy how that works. But all through the Bible, I see a theme breaking forth over to serve the Lord and make a difference for all of eternity. I spent most of my life, a majority of my life, being hurtful, hateful, hurting people, hurting myself, hurting my family, neglecting my kids. I've done so much negative towards people. This is my time to give back, to pay it forward for all the blessings that I have gotten in my life. I should have been dead by now, probably. Amen. I should have been locked up. I should have, I, I'm just one step away from going to prison for a long time. I got my stuff together and tried to figure things out. And it put me in a position where I started to sizzle down and, and, calm, out and calm down a little bit. And, you know, it finally took a lot of times, so yeah. And I finally just gave it to God and just said, let me know what I have to do. I want to serve others and just be strong in the Lord. The most powerful thing that I've learned from my pastors pouring into my life is, I, I don't know how many people know, but it's an honor to serve God. Yeah. It's an honor to be called by God and to be like, you know what, you were called not only to, you know, be a Christian and, you know, be saved and have eternal life, but there's more to the package, you know, like... Pastor Paul always says, you know, there, we, we got benefits. You know, we got some real benefits Amen. that we could tap into. But being a servant is, you know, it, it's always an honor, you know, to, to be called to be able to serve. Because a lot of people wouldn't want to serve. Like I've said, you know, myself, like I served going 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 strong for a minute. And then the moment I wasn't in my word, the moment I was getting distracted, you know, I was I was always my uh, I, I was always my biggest problem to myself. You yeah. know, the devil sometimes didn't even have nothing to do with it. It was my mind not being trained into the right things. It was my mind still, it sleeping in slumber. You know, yeah. and waking and not waking up to be like, you know what, I I need to worry about serving today, not what I can go buy or you know who who's gonna hit me up today or you know I got this little bit of money over here I want to go spend it over here you know like I, I lost track of a lot of things you know but the moment that I had to check myself and be like what type of servant am I you know what I haven't been the best servant and I was called to be a servant it's an honor to be a servant and serve God wherever I can serve him and that's what I want to do out of church and in church out of church and in church, even at work, wherever I go, I, I just want to be a servant and I want to be a blessing to someone else. Amen. Amen. God bless that, you know, see? And that's another reason why I want him on here because I want, you know, not just my uh, input. I want his input as well. And as the days go on, we're going to get lots more input. I want to hear your story. I want to hear why you do what you do and why you serve this mighty God that we serve, you know? It's crazy. I'm going to get Christ. Yeah, Jesus boom, Christ. boom, boom, Jesus Christ, yeah. So, um, I got the bow rail though, too. Yeah, if you do that, she'll bark. <laughs> Sister, go lay down. So, um, I also want to get into what, uh, Matthew 4.10 states. Matthew 4.10, away from me, Satan, for it is written... Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Matthew 6, 24 states, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. It's fun to have money. It's fun to, make, to know that you're able to provide for your family. You got all these things coming in. We all have bills. We all have so many things going on. But money takes over and chokes us a lot, you know? We can go spend 50 to $100 on dinner at night, but we can't put 20 to $50 in the collection plate at church or hand that person with the cardboard sign some money. You know, it, that seems like, why would I want to do that? But 
You know? Why? Because we need to love people. Love. Deny yourself to give to someone else. Amen. That's the important part of it. And it sucks that a lot of people don't realize that. You can give all kinds of things away. I could go without things if someone else can benefit from it. That's just the way it works. You'll always have time to make more money. You may not always have more time to make more memories. Let's explore uh, Ephesians 4. This is in the NIV. Ephesians 4, 1. I don't know if we'll get through it, but 1 through 32 is what I got. I, I just copied and pasted the whole thing and put it up here, but we'll discuss it and figure it out. Uh, Ephesians 4, 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of of the calling you have received. Let's talk about it. Man, the calling that you have received, I feel the calling I have received in my life is to serve people. And how do I serve? I love them. I meet them where they are. I try to figure out how I can give them and meet their needs. Come on. And anything that they do, it doesn't matter what, what if I can give my money, my time, my skills or my handyman craft, craftsmanship, those kind of things. How can I better someone else's day? That's the calling I have. To study and to learn the word of God so I can get up on here and preach. That's the calling. I used to be a prisoner. Ephesians 4.2 Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient Bearing with one another in love. L-O-V-E. You got it? Love is the greatest of all things. When we start to love things and love people, and they start to, be re they start to receive that, that's when stuff starts to grow. Make every, uh, verse 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There, uh, verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you are called. Verse 5, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Come on. Man, it, the word of God, it teaches us. These are instructions that fill our spirit, a spirit that fill our spiritual gas tank. When we have that tank full, we are able to give to others, to fill others' lives. A lot of people feel like their life is depleting and they have nothing left. They have no hope. They just feel like nothing is gaining any kind of traction in their life. And that's, that's where it's wrong. That's where it just puts in a position where, what's going on? Why should I even try? You know. And I believe my calling, again, is to ignite the fire in these people's lives. Amen? Amen. You got anything you want to add to this? Yeah, I like... Uh... Philippians 2, uh, it's Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 7, it says, But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. That's, that's just powerful right there. That is powerful. Let me show, I want, I want to share something right here. Share Before that Bring it from, up. from the notes to... It says right here, it says, um, he said, uh, from 2 6, where we at? Okay, my bad. Said, uh, let this mind be in you, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men yeah and that's, that's just powerful too because not only did not only are we called to be a servant and to serve others as we serve Jesus but Jesus already set that example for us by serving his father first. He served the father first. And he set that an example. How to be a servant. And right here in my notes it says robbery. Because Christ was God. 
He did not look on sharing God's nature as robbery. That is, as a thing to be seized, as though he did not already possess it, or as a thing to be retained as though he might lose it. Equal, as used in this verse, this word speaks of equality of existence. Christ was fully God, yeah. but he limited himself in such a way that he could also be completely human. In Christ, God became man. Amen. That's why... I like that we got to decrease so Christ could increase. In order for us to learn how to be a servant, that yeah. flesh got to decrease so that spirit man could increase in us. And we're like, oh, we're already on go. We, whenever we got to serve, we're there. Whatever, whatever we got to do, we're there. But like I said, it's always good to do it with a heart that wants to wake up and serve. Not more like you're forced to be there. You're for Because yeah. you're not forced to do nothing. You know, God God doesn't God doesn't give us God doesn't set the law for us and expects us to keep it, but he gives us the law expecting that, you know, we could find our spot and know our spot. That's what we're called to be, is a servant. Yeah. And to know that we're called to serve others as he served us, you know. You gotta get this, man. Come on. This boy changing his life around. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, all glory to God. Glory God to God is good. God is doing so much in um, his life, my life. You know, I mean, it's great that we're able to get together and just talk about God and talk about where we came from and what brought us together. Uh, the unity, especially at the Way Medford Family Church. Man, oh man, it's amazing, guys. The worship, the, the, the fellowship, the things that we do outside of the church all together, the men. Uh, how the women get together, it's amazing. This is what God wants us to be a part of. Yeah. We're not supposed to go through this life alone. Absolutely not. And there are, I mean, the, the whole church is full of servants, brother. It's so full of servants. The things that are going on right there. We, we, we got the most amazing pastors and leaders because they already set that foundation Amen. of how to be a servant. You know, and a lot of times... They've already showed me how to be a servant. They will show you how to be a servant. But if your heart's not in it, like I had to check myself, man, I loved being a servant. And the moment I knew, I knew, ain't nobody had to tell me because yeah. I already knew, you know what, I haven't been the best servant. Yeah, man. And, you know, and that comes with feeling, uh, you know, that comes with feeling um, that the enemy will try to put in your head. Well, you know, they don't want you there. You're, you know, you're no help or, you know, you don't know how to be a servant yet. Yeah. Or, you know, this all, all these things, all the lies of the enemy. And you could sit there yeah. and you'd be discouraged. And you know what? You're like, nah, I don't want to serve. I'm better at, you know, not being a servant. And I want people to come serve me. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. Your yeah. heart's got to be in it. You know, you got to do a self-check, a, a self-observant. And that, you know, if you self-observe yourself and you ask yourself, what type of servant am I? Because I do it all the time to make sure that my heart's in line with when I do go serve. You know, I want to be there to serve. I want to yeah. be there to serve. I don't care if I got to come serve the toilets. I don't care if I got to serve toilets today. Oh, Where, I got toilets where, clean. Wherever yeah. I could be a, a, a bond <laughs> servant and be there and make sure I show my face and show up. Then, then, then that's where I find peace, you know, knowing that I'm doing as much as I could do to be a servant. But Amen. I want to, I want to be a faithful servant. I don't want to just be a servant that's there by force. I want to be a servant that wants to be there, that wants to be there and share the love, and you know, love others as Christ loved us, because He loved us first. Amen. He loved us first. Amen. Well, I love you guys that are joining, and, and if you are just joining, we are talking about servanthood through biblical standings and life experiences. Um, got some great comments on you. Your mom says she loves you. Yeah, I love you too, Mom. Uh, Paul Gonzalez, Amen. thank you, brother. God bless you. And uh, we just thank everyone who watches and talks to us, God, uh, that comments to us and all this kind of stuff. It, it's funny, too, that my mom's on here, too, because I remember, uh, you know, just growing up, being, being me before I was... <laughs> Who I am in Christ now, you know. Yeah. My mom would ask me to take the trash out, and I didn't ever want to take the trash out. She would have to ask me multiple times, "Son, take the trash out." Well, I'll do it later. I'll do it in a little bit. You know, watching, uh, playing video games, or going outside and yeah. chilling with my homies. And I never got to taking the trash out, so I didn't know how to be a servant at home. You know, a lot of things I didn't know how to be a man at all. You know, until. God showed me. So you and, never listened. <laughs> and, and God poured into my life. You know, 
when God started pouring into my life, I'm like, man, this is how I was supposed to serve from the get go. Yeah. This is how I was supposed to serve as a child. But now we, you know, it, it's all in here though. We may not know how to be a servant, but everything I need to know it's is in the in word here. of God. It's, it's in here. Check out the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians right here. Book of Ephesians 4, 1 through chapter 32. Yes. I mean, come on. It's gonna t These are the instructions that we have in our life, Fire. you guys. And it's crazy. I got some more. I mean, who wants to hear more scripture? I don't know. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. What else can you hear talks about serving? Let's get into this. Ephesians 4, 12. Wait, Ephesians 4, 1. No, 4, 12 says, to prepare God's people for works of service so the body of Christ may be built up. That's why our church succeeds. That's why our, the body of Christ is fulfilled is because everybody's putting into it. When everybody puts into it, that's when we start to grow. Amen. And I mean, that's when needs are met. That's, when, that's how rents are paid and stuff like Ooh. that. It's, it's, it's amazing how when everyone comes together and serves together, the job is easier. You know, it's, you know... It's crazy how it works. I, I just love it. And I, I love to encourage my kids to serve and, and to, to show them what comes from serving. Even when I just hire them to work with the business and stuff like that, I show them that you're doing a service. Yes, you will be rewarded for it sometimes. Maybe it's not cash or monetary value, but they get something in return. They honestly just learn life skills. Amen. You know, I got some way here. Uh, Ephesians 4. 13, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4.14, 4, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and Ooh. blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, which is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. We are the body of Christ. If Amen. each part does its work, the load is light. So I tell you this. I insist this in... I, here. Ephesians 4, 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do Ooh. in the futility, futility of their thinking. We must give and love and serve others. Come on, bro. It goes on and on. We can be here for the rest of the night. I, I, I love Ephesians too. I just want to piggyback off of you. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Hey, uh, yeah, like I was saying, you know, it's uh, one thing that my pastor taught me, you know, like, we like you know we do adopt a block and you know it's not we don't want to go adopt a block if our heart's not in it you know yeah it's it, we'd rather because you're gonna knock at somebody's door and you're there to reach their need you know and and your heart's not in it then your love your you know the love that you're not pouring out you know gen genuinely is not gonna rate radiate to them right right you know you're gonna say that you're there to serve but you know you you're like hey. Hi, I'm here to serve. You know, like you got when you serve, you gotta you, you gotta have that zeal. You know, you 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 want to be on fire when you're there to serve, and let them know that you're there to serve. And you want to yeah. have a, you want to you just want to be happy. You don't want to be mad. You don't want to be at somebody's door, mad dog, and like, hey, I'm here to serve. What's up? You need anything? No, you want you want to come with compassion. Like, like Ephesians five right here says, walk in love. Therefore, the imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet uh, smelling aroma. Like, we're there to offer ourselves to That's serve. Good. We're there to offer ourselves to serve to somebody. You know, in my notes right here, it says, believers are to follow the example of God's actions. Amen. He loved us when we were still his enemies. When we were still his enemies, he loved right. us. As imitators, believers should demonstrate the type of self-sacrificial love. Yeah. We're sacrificing our day to go serve somebody. We're sacrificing our time to go serve somebody. <laughs> Come on now. Dog will start barking and keep thumping. Oh, man. Oh, man. Mess man. Up the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit got me wanting to jump right now. This dog will start barking at anything. Be good, doggy dog. Jump man, jump man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Amen. Forgiving each other just as Christ 
God forgave you. Woo. How do we serve people? Forgive those people that you hold resentments towards. You know, you're holding a resentment. What's, what's that going to do for you? Amen. It's crazy how that works because, I mean, when you hold like a grudge against someone, I mean, they're off living their life doing whatever they want to do. They probably don't even think about what's going on or that you, they don't even care that you have a resentment. So you're holding that into yourself. So I urge you to free yourself. Amen. For, the, forget and love these people. By the blood of Jesus, free yourself. Amen. You know, if forgiveness is not for them. It's it, it's for you. You know, it, it does something for you. You could be the only one being uh, being the forgiver in the situation with the other person. If they don't want to forgive, then that's just something that they got to deal with. But as long as you know that you forgave in your yeah. heart and you forgive them, Ooh, it's like a burden off your chest. Amen. And it does something for you. It does something for your heart. Yeah. Another important thing, Ephesians 4.29 right here. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. This is another way that we can serve. But only what is helpful and builds others up according to their needs. And that it may benefit those who listen. That's important. Get rid of all bitterness. Rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. How do we serve others with love? We get rid of all that garbage. All that garbage, it just fills us up and it contaminates us. It pollutes our minds, our thoughts, our words. And things come out in a misconstrued way and it just, it's not Christ-like. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, be kind and compassionate to one another. That's how we serve. Forgive each other. Amen. You know, we need to have hearts of blood. Our hearts should be on fire and ablaze for serving and giving our time and doing the things that we know we need to do. It's not, I mean, it's a, it's a forever thing. I enjoy doing it. Um, I have been a part of a church where I felt like it was just a drag to go and just do what they wanted me to do. Why? Because the church, there wasn't, many other servants so it felt like a lot more you see and when you get involved in another church that there's so many servants the load is light like i mentioned and it's i've been where a lot of you guys have been if you're watching that you have been stuck and you just feel like you can't serve no more it feels like a nine to five job things are just weighing on you then maybe the circle or the church you're in is not where you should be. I don't know what church you should go to or what crowd you should be in. I hope it's a Christ-like crowd if you're a believer. But involve yourself where many servants of God come together, fellowship, talk, spend and do life together. That's what I encourage you. Anything else? Amen. Oh, mm. That's good right there. Amen. Oh, man. I'm chewing on what you're saying. Oh, good. So I got some more, too. <laughs> so the importance of giving is what's most valuable. What's most valuable to you? Your time? Your energy? Give it. Give it with a kinding heart. Kids out there, you need to give. Share. You can take this to your classrooms. They are trying to remove the Bible and Scripture and all this stuff from the schools and the classrooms. Do not let that happen. We still have the free speech. We can still go into the school. We can give people what they need. If you're one of your classmates forgot paper, a binder, a notebook, or something, a pencil, be there to serve and help them. If they are unsure of um, how to figure uh, an assignment out or they have some kind of issue going on and you have the ability to meet them where they are and show them love, that's what you got to do. Amen? Amen? It's crazy. In Psalm 31, 14 through 15, David illuminates this. I want you guys to talk about this. He illuminates our mind with the thought. I would like each of you guys to ponder today. He says, but I trust in you. O Lord, I say you are my God and my time is in your hands. Now is your time placed in God's hands? Where's your commitment? It's time for self-evaluation, right? How much of your time in one week is devoted to your relationship with the Lord? Are you immersed and soaked into your word? 
Do you meditate in prayer? Do you find time to pray over your children? That's a big important thing. Really important. Mm. To pray over your kids. Mm. My five-year-old's always saying, Daddy, you gonna come pray over me? Yes, I'll be right there. Get ready for bed, get in bed, and I will be there to pray over you, to pray for any foul spirits to be removed from the house and anywhere around you. You know, that's how I serve at home. Mm. I pray over my family. I pray over everything, and God brings in the blessings. When you get all the garbage out, God has, he brings in all these other blessings to fill it in. He brings in the blessings that we need in our life. Another question I have for you guys out there. What do you spend most of your week doing? A lot of, we have jobs. We have things that are going on in our life. We have things that, um, we have that take more time than others. But do you have the time to get into your word? Take some time to yourself, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Take a part of your day. You know, it's crazy because a lot of us will spend a lot of time going through the phone and just scrolling aimlessly, just ha -ha, laughing at that thing, you know, and we all do it, I do it, it's fine, but we have to find a time to immerse in the Word, to get deep in the Word, to find what we can do. Amen. And if you don't know all any answers to these questions, I challenge you to track your time this week. Just take this week. Track the time. Write it down. You know? Don't watch 30 reels on Facebook and take this little task here. I challenge you to track your time this week. Evaluate what you do with your time. And evaluate who gets the benefits of your time. Is it God? Your family? Your church? Your friends? Come on. Think about it. I challenge you this week. And this series is going to continue on to next week. It will be another aspect of servanthood and having a heart ablaze for giving and serving others. What attitude dominates your time? When do you serve and who do you serve? Write them down. Where do you spend your time? Here's a good one. Where does your week line up with what Scripture says? About what should dominate your time? See, Christians must give their time because it's imperative. It's important. There's a common belief that most people, a common belief among, amongst most people that you cannot build a home without work. And the truth is you cannot build a church without work. Amen. You cannot make footprints in the sand. Uh, you cannot make footprints in the sand if you're sitting down. No. You're going to make butt prints. Huh. Lazy prints. You know, you're not getting anywhere. That's a quote I found online. Cannot make footprints in the sand of time sitting down. Doesn't have a person who said it, but I found it. I thought it was fitting. Here's a challenge to you as well. Coming for your money. No. Tithe 10% of your time this week. 10% of your money. To develop your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Here's another challenge to you. Tied 10% of your time, I'm not asking for your money, of your time to the kingdom of God. Then do whatever you want with the other 80%. You have 100%. 100%. Can you give 20% to God in developing time with the Lord and a commitment with the Lord? That 20% is going to make a difference for all eternity. He doesn't want everything you have. Trust me, you'll get anything and all everything back. I saw a post on Facebook the other day. It's crazy because mm. I didn't. I never had the money to tithe until I started tithing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you give into the kingdom of God, stuff comes back to, back to you. It, come, it overflows back. So, yeah, I may not have had 100 bucks to put in the plate or but once I put that hundred bucks in, a thousand came later. Yeah. Or it's just the way things work. God's going to make sure you have everything that you need. 
I say again, you're 100% of your time. Give 20% of that to God Ooh. this week. 20% of that to God this week. And watch how that changes your life. Amen. I got an illustration here of a man. Um, well, maybe I won't share that right now. I'll carry that into the next time, but... Our hearts need to be on fire with the passion that we give our time. But we also need to have hearts on fire for the passion to serve others in a meaningful relationship. Amen. I, I like right here, too, in Romans, it says, Romans chapter 12, verse 11, it says, No lagging, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Right here, if we go down to Acts chapter 20. Verse 19, it says, Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. And Holy Spirit spoke to me, you know, because there's days where we want to wake up and we, if we're known to be a servant and we know we're waking up with a zeal to serve, the enemy's already yeah. plotting on your day. He's already plotting on your day with distractions, you know, with something that could come up to be like, oh, I, I don't think I can go serve today because this just came up or I got to go do this. No, 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 no. Push that aside. I always, you know, I, I, I always check myself. I'm going to push that aside and this is where I need to be at today. This is where I need to go serve at today. This is where I got to do whatever I got to do to serve God. Not, not not serve self, but serve God. I want to learn how to serve God in everything I do. I want to decrease so the Lord could increase in all that I do. Amen. I want to be able to be a blessing to somebody. I don't want nothing. I don't want money. I don't before before I want to go grab a mic and just you know people to hear me before I want to do anything of my desires, I want to decrease and learn how to be a servant first. I want to learn how to serve. I want to learn how to. Be a servant. But remember, serving the Lord with all humanity, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of Jews. Amen. Amen. That's, it's crazy. You brought up the book of Acts, and that was my next point on my notes. <laughs> Come on. It's crazy because, it, I mean, Holy Spirit. You know, Ooh. it's crazy how this works together. So I encourage you to take the time and read the book of Acts. With the intention of looking for the relationship in the biblical community. So I want to explore a little bit Acts, number, Acts 2, 37 through 47. Go. We've got some time. So Acts 2, 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to that number that day. Come on. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. 45. Seeking their possessions and goods, and they gave to anyone that had a need. Ooh. Every day they continued to, to meet together in temple courts they broke their bread in homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts that's how we have to do it lastly praising god and enjoying the favor of all people and the lord added to their number daily those who were being saved amen that's it's just amazing they devoted themselves to learning god's word to drawing close to god it's amazing how that works and if we all come together, that's exactly what we do. It makes it easier. It come makes on. it fun, you know? That's just why I wanted this is why I want to be surrounded with that body of Christ. You got something? I, I, I like how you just went over uh, the book of Acts, chapter two, verse 37. Yeah, Peter's argument was, 
irrefutable. Irrefutable. Cut to the heart. The, Jude the Judeans asked what they should do. This was the point of the new birth. The Spirit of God brought conviction to their hearts. The springboard of action. Repentance for the Judeans involved rejecting their former attitudes, their formal attitudes and opinions concerning who Jesus was. Be baptized. When a person recognizes who Jesus Christ really is, the result is a desire to do what he commands. The desire to do what he commands. Amen. Not what we want to do, but what he commands. You're going to serve today. Like I said, decrease. We got to step aside. God put put me aside. It's not a, it's not about me no more. We don't just always have to serve. We have to serve every day. It's yeah. a it's a daily servant. It's a daily. And servant it's not just book. in the church house. It's, no, it's at home. It's, it's at work. It's come on on the bus in the car. You you got to be a part of something that's growing. Yeah. And if you don't know how to find it, reach out. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Yeah. Come to the Way Medford Family Church. Pastor Paul gonna show you and tell you. You're gonna feel it, man. He's now. the real deal. Come on, come on now. <laughs> you wanna be Woo. filled with the Spirit? We got pastors and leaders in the church that are gonna show you. You wanna feel the Holy Spirit? You wanna see the Holy Spirit move? Come see us. What is it, 2655 South Pacific Highway? Are we in Medford? The old CDS building, the Way Medford Family Church. Come check it out. <clears throat> Sundays at 10 a.m. Um, Wednesdays at 7. Hey, okay. what else do I got up in here? Oh, I got so much. I got, I, I got a whole series. I mean, we probably won't get through it all today, but it's great that, uh, let me finish it with this. You got anything else you want to add to these? Um, uh, no. Not, I'm trying to chew on what, what you're meant. saying, too. I'm learning as you're going, also. So, um, I don't know everything. Oh, neither do I. I, I, know, I, I don't and, know nothing. I had to study in Bible and find this. And, I know you know, nothing. See, your ability to experience and enjoy the fullness of human community is directly linked to your community with God. Many people wish they were doing better in their human relational world, but they don't see that there's a definite connection between their communion with God and the quality of their own human relationships. Your relationship building potential with your horizontal relationships is directly tied to the maturity level of your vertical relationship with God. That's how it is. God is going to change your life if you allow Him to be inside of it. Amen. Let Him be, let Him drive. We don't always have to be in charge. When God, someone sent us fireworks, saw that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but God is going to put that awe back in your life. Amen. You know, not the awe the doctors asked for, but the awe of God. <laughs> you know? Worship God with awe. Hebrews 12, 28. We need to come to church and worship Him with awe. awe. Yeah. The term is defined as a mixed feeling of reverence, fear, and wonder caused by something majestic, Amen. Or sacred. That's the definition of the word awe. It's crazy. Awe refers to a feeling or fearful or profound respect or wonder inspired by the greatness, superiority, grandeur of a person and suggests an immobilizing effect. Amen. God works in great ways. The biblical community had an awe of God and a result the apostles did miraculous things by God's grace. See, the book of Acts is after, it's after John, right? After the death and resurrection of Christ. You know, it's, and these apostles were able to go out and just a flock came with them. And they had people follow them. They were able to, to do these miraculous signs and wonders. And it was amazing how God just started transforming they started to see everything that God or everything that Jesus talked about in his earthly ministry. They started to see and understand it and be, just be strong in the spirit. Amen. It's amazing. Praise the Lord. Anything else you got? Ah. End this in prayer? Yeah, let's end this in some prayer. You want to pray? Mm -hmm. Let me yeah, pray. pray so. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for this divine time, Lord, to be able to share the word in the word of being a servant, Father God. Lord, I ask that you pierce many hearts right now as you pierce 
ours too, Father God. Lord, I ask that you continue to grow us, that you continue to change our lives, Father God, miraculously, Father God. We're not asking for blessings, Father God, but we're asking for a deeper connection. I want nothing to gain but a spiritual harvest, Father God. Lord, I ask that right now there will be a healing process going on in my hearts and everybody's hearts that are watching, Father God, that you touch our lives right now, Father God, that you will continue to make yourself known and real in people's lives, Father God, yes. that don't know you, Lord, that you draw close to them, Father God, for you said when two or more are gathered, there you are in the midst, Father God. I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, I ask that people watching, Father God, there will be they, they there will be a there will be a thought going on in their ear right now, Father God, in their mind, Lord, and they want to pick up that word and see what the see what the joy is all about, Father God. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord. So we thank you for all that you do. For you loved us first, Father God, and we will continue to love you back. We will continue to serve you, Father God. I ask that you will continue to use us, Father God, as vessels, Lord, that you will grow us and that you will uh be there with us, Father God, for you will always go you will always go before us, Father God, in all that we do, Lord. So Holy Spirit, we thank you. Father God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory right now in Jesus' name, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God. Thank you all for joining Bible Sessions. We'll Amen. be back again next week. He may be here. He may not be. We don't know, but guess what? The message will still continue. Amen. Continue this uh, Servanthood series. God bless every single one of you. Save to serve. Thank you for having me, bro. Hey, you're welcome, brother. I love Amen. you, man. Praise the Lord.